Hello, my name is Michael Smith, and today we're going to take all you just learned in the procedural texture basics and use it to create a real procedural texture. And the one we're going to start with is wood. If you haven't looked at the procedural texture basics, you're welcome to start here. You may find some of it confusing. I will reference those tutorials as we go through where it's relevant. So uh, to get started, we're going to use Blender 3. Although I am using Blender 3, everything I do here should work more or less identically in any of the two series, if that's what you have. I'm going to start with General. And within General, as usual, I'm going to go to Shading. Within Shading, I'm going to click the top left corner of these two windows and drag them to the left, because I don't need what's over there. And this time, instead of getting rid of the default cube, I'm going to leave it there, because we want to make wood. Wood patterns are the effect of cutting blocks out of a tree uh, trunk and that or, or branch, I guess. And that tree trunk uh, has circular, uh, a pattern of circular rings in the center. And cutting through that is what gives you all the fascinating textures and beautiful textures that wood has. And so what we're going to do here is create a three dimensional texture. We're going to start with the rings uh, that go through the trunk, if you will. And then from those rings, we're going to cut out this block and that's going to make our wood. That sounds complicated. It's less complicated than it sounds. So we're going to start by add input Texture coordinate, uh, if you don't understand what texture coordinates are, this is gonna be confusing and you should start with my tutorials on that topic. We're also going to use the object coordinate system because I want the wood texture, I don't want the wood texture to be stretched by the object I'm, and I want it to be 3D. So it's not gonna be a UV because UV is not 3D and generated stretches according to the bounding box of the object. Again, if that's confusing, go take a look at my tutorials on the different coordinate systems. So we're going to uh, go ahead and create a ring texture. So the way that we create a ring texture is we want to first measure the distance from the center of the log. So from, in this case, we're gonna call that the x-axis. And then along that distance, we wanna create a wave texture, a ring. So as we go along that distance, we want it to alternate from white to black, white to black. To compute the distance from the x-axis, we're just going to use the vector distance function, which I'll show you in a minute. And to make a nice wave that goes from white to black, white to black, we're going to use sine, uh, which is a function that as the, the value you put in goes from zero up to infinity, makes a repeating pattern of uh, minus one to positive one back and forth in a nice smooth way. So to that end, we're going to go to add, converter, vector math, we're going to put in the object coordinates and the first thing we're going to do is multiply and we're going to remove the x coordinate for the purposes of these rings we only care about the distance from the x axis so as the x coordinate changes we don't want the ring to change at least not uh yet and so what we're going to do is multiply x by zero y by one and z by one so now we have the just the x axis and what we're going to do is now add converter vector math and now we'll just do distance and we're going to find the distance uh, from the x-axis to 0, 0. Uh, sorry, from this point to the x-axis, which in this case is going to be 0, 0. So if we plug that in and map it as a color, this is going to do what you expect, which is if you look at this object on the ends of the quote-unquote trunk, where we're near the center, that's going to be 0, because that's where the x-axis is. And as we move away, it goes to white. And if you look at the outside, maybe there's some slight gradient change here. But effectively, it's white because it's all far away from the axis. So now we want to make rings, uh, alternating rings that come out of this point. So we're going to take that distance. We're going to plug it into add, converter, math, drop it on the line, go to sign. And nothing. That's because this is only going from 0 to about 1, and zero, along 0 to 1, sign doesn't do anything interesting at all. So what we need to do is have this go from 0 to some bigger number. And to do that, we're going to do add, converter, math, multiply. And now we're going to multiply by a nice big number. So now we're having it alternate, but if you look closer, something's a bit funky. The white has a nice gradient from black to white back to black, but the black is just solid. And the reason for that is that, as I mentioned, sine goes from minus one to positive one. In Blender, anything less than zero shows as black. So what's happening is uh, all the nice gradient that goes to the bottom end of this curve is just showing up. All is black. So we're going to go to add, converter, map range, and we're going to take that range that sine is putting out from minus one to one. And that's going to map from 0 to 1. And as soon as I do that, you can see it's nice and smooth in both directions. So this is the end of the first section. We've created a three-dimensional texture that is rings. 
emanating out from the x-axis like a trunk and you can see along the end we get end grain like we would on a trunk and on the side uh, we get you know what you would get for wood grain except of course it doesn't look like wood yet Okay, so now we have our rings. Now what we need to do is make it so they're less regular. As the tree grows, it's not gonna grow every ring exactly the same size. And so what we want is to change both the strength and the distance between these rings. And so to change the distances, what we're gonna do is as we compute this distance that's going from the center out to the edge, we're gonna add in a random value that makes it go a little bit faster or a little bit slower as we go out uh, from the center out. That way the rings aren't gonna be quite as regular, they'll be offset a bit by whatever this random amount is. The way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna take these nodes, the distance that we've computed, and we're gonna go ahead and add Texture, I'm gonna add the wrong one. So let's start with white noise. This is not going to work. So I'm gonna take the distance for each distance value. If you remember from the, the procedural textures included in Blender tutorial, uh, this is gonna produce a completely random value out. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is converter math add. And when we plug that in, garbage. So we get a point cloud and that's because between any two points as we go out along this distance from the center, we're adding a completely random value. So it's not related between two of these points. So they're not close to each other. So it just distributes the rings all over the place. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is right click that, delete with reconnect, go to add converter, uh, sorry, texture noise. So noise is going to give us a random value, but one that is along a gradient. So instead of just changing completely randomly, the direction of the value will change as we go along the distance, uh, but in fairly small increments. So that's better, but you can see that we seem to have added rings. So that's because, let's go here and change the scale to zero. This is with no, no change at all. Well, as we ramp this up, the detail in this will get too high, and when it does, it'll start splitting one ring into multiple rings. So it starts mixing some of the rings with the other rings because it's jumping too far back and forth even within one ring. So what we want to do is just back up the scale to, oh, I don't know, here, uh, maybe a little bit more. And so you see what's happening now. It's changing the distances between them, uh, but not so much that it's creating multiple rings. And then we can also fiddle with the roughness. This changes basically the fine detail. So where the rings are kind of close to each other, it moves them a bit more. And there we go. So now we have rings that are not an equal distance from each other. They change as we go outwards. The next thing that we're gonna wanna do is actually make these wobbly so that this looks a bit more like wood. And we'll do that next. Okay, so now we have our rings. Our rings are no longer even, but now they need to be wavy. So if you haven't looked at my tutorial on manipulating coordinate systems, go look at that first. Uh, I'll try to make it clear, but that might help you understand. What we're gonna do is manipulate the incoming coordinate system to make everything wavy. And the way we're gonna do that, we're gonna go ahead and add texture. We're gonna use noise texture again. Uh, we're gonna put the object coordinate in. Now, if I just plug this in to our texture, wait for the laptop to catch up, completely wild. We just get this crazy marbling everywhere uh, as we're just completely changing the, the, the coordinate system. Uh, so what we want to do is basically just get a bit. So we're going to go to add color and mix RGB, which gives us a way to take two vectors and mix them together by a factored amount. And we're going to put the, again, waiting for the laptop to catch up here. We're going to put the object coordinates in here, and then we're going to adjust the factor. So here, entirely the noise texture. Here, entirely the rings. We can adjust it so we have a little bit of noise. The other thing I'm going to do, zooming out, is scale the number of rings that we have. So you remember that this multiply here changes how many sign iterations we go through. I'm just going to ramp that up so we have more rings on our tree. Now, if you look at the side, uh, you're getting more of a wood pattern. Uh, if you're looking at something like maple, this will look, you know, a lot more like what you're expecting. If you're looking at something like uh, oak, this is, this is not what you want. And the way that we're going to fiddle with this, there's a couple ways. One is you can adjust how much noise there is by fiddling with this. But we don't want no noise. We actually want this noise but spread out over the x-axis. So again, we're just going to manipulate the coordinate system. So I used shift right click. In Blender 3, uh, I think in Blender 2, this works the same way. It just co combines these two connections into one. And then I'm going to add a step here before them. So add uh, converter vector math, and then I'm going to do a multiply. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to stretch out one of these coordinates. So let's multiply all three by one. 
okay? And now what I wanna do is I wanna stretch out this x-coordinate. So essentially what I wanna do is instead of the x-coordinate going from whatever, you know, zero to one along this axis, I want it to go from zero to maybe 0.1. And the way I do that is by dividing just the x-axis. And I'm gonna divide effectively by multiplying by a decimal. So as we stretch this out, now you're gonna start seeing patterns that look a bit more like a wood like oak as opposed to something that's quite so finely figured. The other thing we're gonna play with is where the cut of the wood is coming from. So this is not how we cut wood. You don't get wood with the center of the trunk right in the middle of your block of wood. Uh, what they do is they, they cut the wood uh, this way or that way in a bunch of different patterns, which I don't entirely understand, so I won't get them into get into them. But we can play around with what cut of wood we have effectively by again uh, manipulating the coordinate system. So we're gonna to go to add converter vector math. And now for instance, if you make a cut of the wood across near where the center of the wood is, what you're gonna see is that almost all of the rings are almost completely vertical. And so you get a regular set of uh, rings, ring cuts across the, the, the side. If you look at the other side, you see the ring is completely horizontal. So the figure, the, the detail that you're getting is all this ring popping up and down in and out of the cut that you have. And so you get a much more spread out uh, look. And if you have this cut on the side, you have a mix. You go from being almost horizontal here to almost vertical here. And as a result, you get the drawn out more figured uh, bit of the wood here, and you get the very regular narrow bands here. So that's the basic idea. In the next section, we're going to go ahead and make this look a bit more like a two by four, fiddle with the settings, add some color, and call it a day. So uh, end of section three, I think, uh, and we'll move on to section four. Okay, so now we have our rings, we have variable distance between our rings, we have some wobbliness to our rings, and we can move around where the cut is, excuse me, relative to the center of the trunk. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and make this wood colored. So, uh, and, and add a couple other details just to make this a little more wood like. So, like. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna change the shape of this to be more like a two by four. So we're gonna select the object with left, we're gonna press S for scale, Z for Z axis, I'm going to squish this down, and then I'm going to press S for scale, uh, X for X axis. We're going to make this look a bit more like some dimensional lumber. Not that I'm trying to make it exact. Now, what it's done by default is just stretch the texture. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is go to Object, um, Apply, Scale. Again, if you didn't look at the texture coordinates tutorials, please do if this doesn't make sense. But what this is going to do is now with object coordinates, the texture is just going to extend all the way along the length rather than repeating, uh, sorry, rather than stretching from zero to one, which is what it was doing before. So there we go. Now we got our piece of wood. Let's move where the center of the wood is a little bit. So, oh, that's the scale. Oops. Uh, move the center of where the wood is. There we go. So we're going to make this a cut off to the side approximately from the center maybe and let's move the z a little bit there we go okay so this is what we're going to do the other thing i'm noticing i'll come back and fiddle with this we want the grain to be a little more detailed here and, and we'll do that in a minute so now that we've got this we just need to add color uh, and the way you're going to do this is you want to keep your grain black and white because you want to apply it to different wood and you want to be able to change the color. So we're not going to introduce color here. We're just going to give a gradient. To turn the gradient into something that has color, there's a bunch of techniques. The one I find most useful for procedural purposes is to go to Add, uh, Color, and go to Hue Saturation. And with Hue Saturation, what we can do is plug the color, uh, the, the sorry, the gradient value into value, and then we can adjust what we want the base color to be here. So I'm gonna pick a sort of ready yellow brown, a la, let's say, oak, like this. Uh, and now what I'm gonna do, that's pretty much it. We're gonna fiddle with these grains a bit because they're too much. Uh, they're too strong uh, and uh, they're, they're too even. They're all the same strength. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take uh, this whole thing and we're just gonna, one, move into the scale for the for the original uh, wood grain, and we're gonna dial that way back. So we're gonna make these really heavy grains just to be the major grains. So we're gonna have a few in there, but way fewer than we had before. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna add a second set of grains that are lighter and much tighter in addition to this. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna select these, Shift D to duplicate, put in the same value, um, 
put in the same. I should have duplicated the range while I was at it. So duplicate the range. So all of that's going to be the same. But now what I'm going to do is add color and use mix RGB again so that I can mix uh, this one and that one. And instead of mix mode, I'm going to do darken mode. So what this is going to do is it's going to take the first one and in cases where the second one is darker, it's going to add the second one. And the factor is going to determine how much of the second one I get. So right now, those two things overlap 100%, so this isn't going to do anything anyway. But what I can do, waiting for Blender to catch up, is I can make this have the high number of grains, and then I can go ahead, and I've already got these a bit lighter, make these lighter grains. So now, instead of having one set of grains that are all huge, I have lighter grains. This is still too much. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is instead of having this color go from uh, effectively white to black, right, one to zero, that's too much. Now what I want to do is add converter color ramp. So what this lets me do is fiddle around more or less arbitrarily with how I map this zero to one to, to the output zero to one. So what I'm going to do is put gray in the middle plus to get another one wait for blender to catch back up and then put white at the ends effectively and then fiddle with this a bit so this is going to be white and then this is going to be a little gray and then we'll add another one in here more gray and this is going to give us a slightly more marbled pattern so that looks a bit better and then the final thing i'm going to do i don't think this noise is is maybe it's a little too stretched over the y uh, the x-axis so you remember we use this multiply what i'm going to do is back that off a bit so we get a little bit more noise and then maybe increase the factor very slightly okay uh that's too much <laughs> very slightly Okay, so there we go. So this is how to produce a wood texture. There are additional techniques that are gonna make this look better that we'll get into in later tutorials, including we're not playing with other aspects of the, the material, like the uh, uh, shininess of it or roughness of it, uh, the specularity, um, the bump map, that kind of stuff, and that'll make this look a lot better. What we're gonna do in the next tutorial is take the wood as we have it and make a floor out of it, so you can see how to do that. And then I'll probably have an advanced tutorial where we make the wood look even better than this. So hopefully that was helpful and taught you something about procedural textures, and thank you.